today's quiz, we'll be making a metronome. And you can make these using transistors. This is an NPN transistor, and this one's a PNP. And they look identical, and they're complements of one another. In other words, they're made to work together. The 3906 is the PNP, where the 2N3904 is the NPN. We're gonna end up connecting that to a speaker. We have a battery up here. We have a resistor, our two transistors connected together, and a capacitor. When you put all these together, here's the speaker, here's the breadboard with the circuit, we end up getting a metronome, which is a way to keep the beat. So, plug that in. Good. So, our question today is, what would happen to our circuit if I changed from a 22,000 ohm resistor down to a 10,000 ohm resistor? This is what your quiz looks like. As always, write as much as you can down about your thoughts and then list your confidence. Typical student responses will vary on their ability to understand what's actually happening in the circuit. Those that are very comfortable with circuits will instantly see it's an RC circuit. Others might need to be pointed in that direction. So as a teacher, you might say, okay, if we have this circuit and we know that it's keeping the time, what are the components that might help it? By giving that hint, most will end up saying something about R and C, the RC component of this circuit. Once they have that, most students are going to end up saying, well, as I decrease my resistance, it seems as though the rate should increase. So that's the most typical one that we get. Now, if your students are really struggling to understand anything, you can start to build this circuit first and then have them experiment and see if they can work backwards. There's not a right or a wrong way to do this one. Uh, the big thing is to get engagement and your students talking about this. Let's go ahead and explain how this circuit is working. Look, we have our six volts here and we have ground here. The base of our NPN needs at least 0 0.6, 0 0.65 volts in order to open the gate. This gate is ready to go. This is our NPN. The PNP is connected here. It's also not able to allow anything to flow. As we can get some charges to come through the speaker into ground, we will get a pulse, and that's where we get each one of these clicks. So what's first going to happen is nothing's going to happen over here. The gate is essentially closed. We're going to end up being slowed down as we go through this resistor as we start to charge up our voltage on our capacitor. As I put more and more charges on there, I'm going to end up getting a higher and higher voltage on my base. Once I get that 0.6 volts, this can open and go down to ground. At the same time, because this is a PNP, and now we're going to end up having a base essentially feeling a negative here, it's going to then open. And as that one opens, it's going to end up uh, working with the capacitor and going through the speaker. That's how we get that pulse sound. And as soon as this opens and goes to ground, the capacitor essentially is discharged. The voltage goes back to zero. This shuts, this shuts. So it blink, 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 right? Very quickly acting in unison over and over again. So the answer to the question is, if we make that resistance smaller, it will pulse quicker. In other words, the cap can charge and discharge quicker. So if we put a 10, can, a 10, um, a 10,000 ohm resistor in here, it will pulse faster. And that's your quiz for today. Now, if you stick around, we'll go into a little bit more depth and we'll build this. Okay, here's the circuit. There's my schematic. This is how I'm gonna end up knowing the pins on my transistors. I'll bring my circuit over. And it's a bit of a mess because I just carried it over. And all we're going to do is we're going to take all the components off. So here's my speaker. I'll take that off and we'll put that to the side for right now. Disconnect the battery, get that out of the way. Now I'll just take all of my components off. Now look, here's my capacitor. And if you didn't know, capacitors have a negative side and a positive side if they're electrolytic. It's also going to be the shorter leg. I'll just put that right where I want to put it when uh, I'm putting the circuit together. And then I've got my resistor right here. I've got my NPN 
transistor. Now look, when I put the uh, transistor down, legs facing up, E, B, C, E, B, C. Here is, uh, E is gonna go down here like this. So I'll put this right over here. I'll put my other transistor, same thing, E, B, C. I'll put that one right down there. And I am pretty much ready to go. And I have my speaker for whenever I'm done right there. So that, those are my components. And then I have my battery up here. And I'll have that ready to go. For now, let's clean all of these off. And I'll bring in my breadboard. I'll pull all the other wires off so we can see exactly how to do this step by step. So I've got a clean breadboard right here. Uh, let's see if I can put the circuit and the breadboard together. I'll try to work those together. Uh, pull this out. So first thing that I wanna point out is I have this blue rail. I've got a brown wire going to it and a red going to my red rail. So that's how um, I'll power and get my ground. I'll put this off to the side. I'll try and work over in this quadrant over here. First thing that I wanna do is I wanna take my PNP transistor. Notice that the emitter is gonna to go to ground, right? So I know I gotta connect it to the blue rail somehow. I've got the base going through this 22,000 up to my positive. So here's my little transistor. The first thing I wanna do is give myself this ground right here from the emitter to the ground. So I'll just take an orange wire <clears throat> in the middle of nowhere here. I'll just put it right there, okay? Now I'll find my emitter and notice E is gonna be on this side. So I'll grab that leg right there and that goes right in to any one of these three um, rows or columns, however we're looking at it. But you'll see the orange is now connected to my E. That middle one right there is going to end up being my B. And remember, we said that our base will be connected to the positive 6 volts via our 22,000 ohm resistor. So all I have to do is put this into the base and then put this over in my positive. Now, I wanna show that I've got my red, red, orange, so I'm gonna uh, make sure that uh, it's flat for the camera. All right, so we've got that part. We've got this resistor in here. We've got our base, but the base also goes to our capacitor. And notice it's gonna to go to the long leg of the capacitor. So I'll take the long leg of my capacitor and put it on the other side of the base over here. I'll take the negative side and I'll just put it somewhere else. Notice there's nothing else occupying uh, that leg. So I've got the positive, I've got my base, I've got my 22 and so on. Now what I'm ready to do is take my other transistor and let's see if we can move this over just a tad. And we can say, well, in this case, my emitter is gonna go straight to my positive. So again, if I were to use my little code here, or my diagram, E is this leg. So that leg is my emitter. The middle is always the base. Now, you might be able to start thinking two steps at once. Look, the base of this new transistor is gonna to go to the collector. And remember, the collector is over here. We haven't used it yet. You'll notice that that rail on the collector is not connected to anything yet. So I'm gonna put the positive over into here. I'm gonna put my um, base into the collector and then I have my emitter. So look, my emitter is at the positive. My base of this new transistor, maybe I can bend it down for a second, right in there is going to the collector of my first transistor. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. All right, so now uh, remember, the collector also gets connected to the negative side of the capacitor. Remember, we put the capacitor here. It's really sitting in the middle of nowhere. I'll just pull that leg out and put it into that same line with my collector of my 2906 or 3906. So it looks something like that. All right, so I've got that done. Uh, so all I need to do here is 
now take that same collector junction with the capacitor to my speaker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a purple right here. Purple I'll make for sound, okay? So we'll have a purple coming out and that's gonna end up getting connected to my speaker. So I'll take one of my leads from my speaker and I'll see if I can work this in here. I'll just put it right down here if possible. Maybe shift everything up a little bit so we can see our speaker. And the speaker has a magnet on the back and it wants to grab onto everything. So I'll connect that. And I'll also need a negative lead uh, for the speaker to connect the ground also. So I'll just pull a ground out here and I'll just hook this up like so. All right, I think we've got everything. Let's plug this in. I'll put the two battery terminals in. And I've got my positive, I've got my negative, and lo and behold, my speaker's working. And it's working pretty well. So now all I want to do is I want to take and replace that 22,000 with a 10,000, uh, which I have misplaced. Let me go grab another one. Now I'll just pull this out, and we're just going to replace that 22,000 with a 10,000. So I'll put the base here right to my positive spin it around however you can get it to work make sure nothing's touching put this in and now we can hear this is clearly going quicker and of course i can pull this out and take us right back to where we were before with our 22,000. just plug those in and now we're slow again. All right, we've got our circuit back together here. Got a metronome, it's on the breadboard, put it together, and we get our pulsing. This is a wonderful uh, exercise to get your students interested in capacitors, resistors, electronics, and circuitry in general. Don't be intimidated. If you don't have breadboards, that's okay. You can literally lay all of these components out on a table and tape them down. The big thing is just get started. I promise your students are going to enjoy this and they're going to have a gazillion questions and that's really going to help them learn all about electricity, magnetism, and electronics. All right, that's your quiz for today.